Hi there. My name is Ken Savin, and I am the Senior Program Director of InSpace Production Applications for the International Space Station U.S. National Lab. Today we're going to discuss the recently announced solicitation around InSpace Production Applications in Advanced Manufacturing and Materials. I'm going to start off by saying a few words about our advanced manufacturing and materials efforts and a little bit about the International Space Station National Laboratory. I work for the Center for the Advancement of Science in Space, CASIS, and we are designated by Congress to work in partnership with NASA to operate and manage the International Space Station U.S. National Laboratory. The mission of the National Lab is to pursue groundbreaking science, technology, and innovation through work done in space, and to advance the U.S.'s leadership in commercial space. We also work to inspire the next generation through STEM opportunities. I'm now going to say just a few words about our in-space production applications program and the advanced manufacturing and materials effort. In-space production applications is really about research and development focused on generating value through activities performed in space. This can be in the form of manufacturing processes, uh, the actual development of new products, or the creation of new intellectual property. The hope is that this will lead to new business growth uh, and an expansion of the low Earth orbit economy through uh, new uh, demand for access to space and revenue created through work done in space. The advanced manufacturing of materials effort is really focused around understanding the, the production of new materials, so the actual processes for producing those ma materials, and the generation of new materials that would not be otherwise possible. Either they could not be made on Earth or it was so difficult to make them that it was not worth the effort. The hope is here that this will also lead us to processes that can be tested and potentially new methods for production. Those may be processes that have to be done in space, or perhaps we learn something that teaches us a little bit about how we can do this type of work on Earth. Through the InSpace Production Program, we have flown 57 payloads, representing 58 projects that have been supported by 10 implementation partners. Several patents have resulted from this work, and over $13 million have been committed to this program alone. Several commercial efforts have benefited from the results that they've received through work done on station. So why do work in space? Generally, we consider three basic categories that people come to us for to do work in space. Some come to us for exposure to the extreme conditions. They want to test materials or what have you in space, in the vacuum of space. Uh, they also are exposed to wide temperature swings of about 500 degrees between being in the sun or in the shade. And they're also exposed to radiation and microparticle impacts as the space station uh, moves through uh, dust and debris that is in orbit. Groups of people also come to us for the unique vantage point. Not only is it a known and consistent pattern, we fly over a majority of the populated Earth surface, uh, it is the only crewed satellite that uh, allows astronauts to come in and modify perspective or to take uh, images um, on demand where needed. A majority, better than 80% of all the projects we run, are really focused on access to microgravity. Terrestrially, gravity is a dominant force. Everything in the room in which you are sitting, including yourself, were either designed or evolved under the influence of gravity. When gravity is removed, other forces that were smothered are revealed. Not only does this give us the opportunity to study the effects of these other forces, we can also take advantage of the situation to do things and make things that were otherwise not possible. 
There are, of course, a variety of areas in which one can do research on station. We recommend that researchers consider looking at past and current efforts to understand where research has been focused and what has been learned. Past efforts can reveal unexpected but beneficial outcomes and hint at new processes, both for terrestrial and space-based applications. These previous efforts may also reveal pathways to products that would not otherwise be possible. Buoyancy-driven convection, sedimentation, and hydrostatic pressure, the force exerted by a fluid upon itself at equilibrium at any point in that fluid, are all dependent upon gravity. In the microgravity environment of low Earth orbit, they do not exist. And this allows us to observe other forces, uh, viscosity and diffusion, for example, that can not only be better studied, but potentially used in developing new processes that can only be developed in space. The effects of gases and uh, fluids and how they move also influences how they interact. And uh, this can be seen in how uh, liquids and solids interact or liquids and gases, or even uh, immiscible liquids with other liquids like oil and water. And many of these interactions are modified and, and ultimately easier to study in microgravity. Some of the potential applications from our work in interfacial phenomena uh, can be seen on this slide. Uh, on the left, there's an image of uh, a metal microstructure. You can see the different patterns within the metal. This is a result of different structures being formed as the metal solidifies out of the melt and can be caused by convection. Um, again, the transfer of heat and the influence it has on liquids and gases, uh, as well as on density differences in the alloy and heavier atoms falling, for example, through the uh, material when it's in the melt. Of course, there's um, other applications in uh, interfaces between fluids and gases. Uh, some fluids uh, might not mix well with others, so a fluid-fluid boundary like oil and water, and then uh, gels and foams, ultimately leading to opportunities in the pharmaceutical industry, agriculture, um, and not only in the actual products, but in the processes by which they're manufactured. So in this solicitation, what we're really hoping is that people will take some of the uh, knowledge that has been gained and their own understanding and develop some uh, new research concepts for us to explore on station. Some examples of things that people have done in the past um, are to study, for example, the formation of solids. Uh, during solidification, materials may form voids or cracks or imperfections. Uh, and what we found is uh, crystal formation on station in microgravity tends to generate more homogeneous crystals, uh, larger crystals, and better formed crystals. There are also situations where density differences can cause heavy atoms to sink. I'll show an example of why that uh, is significant in the production of some glasses. Um, and we have seen uh, examples where crystal formation has actually led to a, a more uniform overall product, um, uh, crystals of the same shape and size, which for the pharmaceutical and agricultural in, uh, industries is significant. There are opportunities also to do things like containerless processing. Uh, this eliminates contamination at the surface, and contamination is not just material, but also um, nucleation that occurs when a material touches the surface tends to pick up um, some identity or structural information from that interaction, and that can be eliminated using uh, a uh, levitator first furnace, which we do have on station. Metallic glasses tend to stay amorphous, so they don't uh, crystallize, which often happens when they touch the side of a container or if uh, um, there's an interaction with some other force. 
This allows us to not only generate materials of greater strength and wear resistance, but to understand amorphous materials in a way that we may not have been able to otherwise. <coughs> Microgravity can also mitigate the force of compositional segregation where heavier or denser materials fall through a liquid or semi-liquid material. Not only can the uh, differences in density lead to non-uniform products where the more dense materials end up at the bottom, but uh, as the materials, these denser uh, atoms or objects fall through, they tend to disrupt the bulk, leading to microscopic imperfections, as you can see between these two images of the microgravity fiber and the uh, one gravity uh, produced fiber. This is a Zeblan optical fiber, a uh, metallic glass being produced. In addition to metallic glasses, high entropy metal alloys, ceramics can also benefit from uh, access to uh, in-space production. Over the years, the number of facilities and the breadth of facility uh, has increased. This is not a, a complete list, just some examples, but there are furnaces, um, microscopes, and there will be uh, new analytical mater uh, material capabilities uh, soon, as well as um, other uh, uh, systems for exploring material production on station. So now let's talk a little bit about the research announcement. ISS National Lab Research Announcement 2021-5 is focused on in-space production applications in advanced manufacturing and materials. This is for low Earth orbit based applied research and development microgravity applications seeking to demonstrate space-based materials manufacturing and production activities that as I mentioned earlier, enable new business growth and capital investment, represent scalable and sustainable market opportunities, produce reoccurring value with the potential to generate demand for, the, for and revenue from access to space. You can find the solicitation at the website listed below. Now I'm gonna give um, some details around the solicitation. Um, the details can also be found at the site. And uh, if you do have questions, you can always reach out to us. You can reach out to me directly, and I'll give information about that in just a moment. The areas of special interest for this particular solicitation include advanced or exotic materials, their production or use in microgravity, and the technologies related to their production in microgravity that improve their ultimate application. Areas of interest include thin layer deposition, crystal growth, and metallurgy. We're open to other areas, but those are really the areas that we are focusing on now. Let's talk about dates for this solicitation. The request for proposal period is open. This uh, request for proposal will follow a two-step proposal submission process. In step one, we are requesting that you submit a concept summary. This is a two to three page summary of your proposal. The cutoff date for this concept summary is May 6th, 2021. If you were invited to submit a full proposal, that submission period goes from that May 6th date through June 22nd, 2021. CASIS is funding the implementation and operational parts of this project. We are not funding the uh, principal investigators internal project costs. Again, the concept summary, the first part of this submission process is uh, two to three pages. Uh, there is a template provided at the website that was shown on the previous slides. We're asking for the basics, uh, hypothesis, success criteria, overview of the way this project will be executed 
in space and the preparations to get it there, uh, why you need access to space, why the International Space Station is necessary. If you have any questions about this, you should feel free to reach out to me. My email is here on the slide, ksavin at issnationallab.org. We are interested in the operational approach, the hardware, um, who the implementation partners might be, um, what are the requirements for the experiment, uh, how samples will be handled both launch and um, on station and returned. And uh, for that reason, we are um, offering up, um, advice from our side. If you wanna talk to some of our operational experts, um, you can do that uh, at the email shown there. OPS at issnationallab.org. Uh, and you should feel free to reach out to the implementation partners themselves. I'll have that information on another slide. Uh, we are opening this up to people who are considered U.S. persons. Uh, so you have to be a U.S. citizen or green card holder, and uh, the institution has to be uh, a U.S.-based institution. You can find all that information on the website as well. We are evaluating these proposals based on operational feasibility and uh, scientific merit um, and ultimately the benefit to Earth or the benefit to people on Earth. So before submitting, uh, we recommend that you do reach out to our operations team for details if you have any questions. And again, uh, if you want to uh, talk to an implementation partner. Uh, you can find our commercial implementation partner uh, lists at the website shown there. I'd like to close by um, again encouraging you to reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, we want your proposal to be the absolute best proposal it can be. I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'd like to wish you the best of luck. Looking forward to seeing your proposals.